administration has been part of the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History since it opened in 1910 and continues today. Scientific illustration is art created to help explain science. When scientists make a new discovery, it is important for them to present their finds to others through publication in a scientific journal. The scientific illustrator's main objective is to accurately record or interpret the scientist's discovery in the form of a drawing. The drawing and text then work together to communicate the new information to the reader in the clearest possible way. Illustrators and scientists work together in much the same way in order to create an exhibit such as the Sand Ocean Hall. Two of our scientific illustrators, here at the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History, are Molly Kelly Ryan, who works for the Department of Invertebrate Zoology, and Mary Parrish, who works for the Department of Paleobiology. Both illustrators have work that can be seen in the new Sand Ocean Hall. I'm Molly Kelly Ryan. As the illustrator of invertebrates, I've drawn shrimps and crabs, corals and octopus, snails, worms, sponges, and some other small animals without backbones. Throughout most of my 32 years here at the museum, I've worked with taxonomists. These are the scientists who describe and name new species. The drawings I do of these new species must be highly detailed and accurate and uh, to show in pictures what the scientist says in words. Typically, when I'm given one or more specimens of, of a species to draw, I start by looking at them under the microscope. It's always fascinating to see in detail the bumps and hairs and joints of these tiny creatures. To ensure that I record all the detail and get the proportions correct, my microscope has an attachment called a camera lucida. This has prisms and a mirror that extends out over my drawing paper so that as I look through the microscope, I see with both my eyes my specimen. And with one eye, I also see my paper and the tip of my pencil. So this initial drawing is sort of a tracing of what appears to be the specimen on the paper. I used to finish these drawings with uh, pen and ink or, or paint and airbrush. All my final renderings now are done on the computer, usually with the airbrush tool of Photoshop. These drawings then are part of the official species description and are published in scientific papers and books, which are rarely seen by the public. The images of phyllae created for the discovery display in the Sant Ocean Hall were of small invertebrates also, but the process and the end result was different from my usual work. I had no specimens under the microscope. Instead, I used photos and drawings and written descriptions of the animals of a phylum to create not a specific animal, but the typical look of an animal of a particular phylum. With a background in fine art, I find it both challenging and satisfying to make my illustrations aesthetically pleasing while still rendering them scientifically accurate. Hi, I'm Mary Parrish, and I draw fossils for the Department of Paleobiology at the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History. Fossils are the remains of animals and plants that lived not only thousands of years ago, but usually they lived millions and millions of years ago. Most of the things I draw are extinct. Since they can't be photographed, I'm often asked to bring the ancient environments back to life on paper. One of my recent projects was to help illustrate the Journey Through Time section of the Sant Ocean Hall. I painted a series of whales, and these helped to tell a story of whale evolution. I also illustrated top predators, such as Dunkleosteus, Cacarodon, Mosasaur, ammonites, eurypterids, and invertebrates such as extinct starfish and sea urchins and many other things. Each life restoration requires a lot of research and I work closely with the scientists on every project. We always begin by studying the fossils themselves such as the skull of this 34 million year old Oligocene whale called Janositus that's on display in the ocean hall. 
We read and look at other related fossil and living animals and work with the experts from around the world to try to make sure our illustration is as accurate and up-to-date as possible. Many sketches and emails go back and forth between myself and the scientist until at last a final rough sketch is approved. Only then can I complete the final illustration. Most of my time is spent in the research phase of the project. I use acrylic paint and a bit of Photoshop to make the final illustration. Yanocetus is a very interesting extinct whale because evidence on the skull shows that it may have had both teeth and protobaleen in its upper jaw. Another interesting illustration I worked on is the 290 million year old Permian age shark called Helicoprion. The only part of Helicoprion that fossilized is its tooth whorl and a bit of cartilage. No other vertebrate animal has this sort of spiral dentition. When I researched the animal, I found it had been drawn in many different ways. So I consulted with the museum fossil shark expert Robert Purdy and modern shark expert Fix Springer. After much research, the scientists determined that the most likely place for the whorl to have been situated is in the throat, so that's where I put it. This is still being debated among scientists, but one thing we do know for sure, and that is there was a very strange shark swimming in the Permian Seas. Perhaps newly discovered fossils will one day answer the question once and for all. You can read more about how we reconstructed Helicoprion in the Features section of the Museum's Paleobiology website at this address. That was Molly Kelly Ryan and Mary Parrish speaking on Scientific Illustrators here at the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History. The museum is located on 10th Street and Constitution Avenue Northwest in Washington, D.C. We are open daily from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and it is free to the public. We hope to see you soon.